What is up, Sopranos fans? You know who it is. It's the number one Sopranos YouTuber, Kino, and I am back with another Soprano log. Today, we're officially starting season four. We've passed the halfway point of the series, and today we're going to be looking at the first episode of season four for all debts, public and private. Now, that phrase is found on uh, US dollars, and of course, this episode deals a lot with money and the economy, um, but it's also the first episode to be filmed after the September 11 terrorist attacks. Now, 9-11 had a huge impact, not only on the show, but on America as a whole. And I plan on doing a separate video talking about how 9-11 changed the show, changed the plot and the tone. But in this episode, we're going to see how there's a lot of things that are different after the attacks. And of, of course, the first thing is that the Twin Towers are no longer featured in the title sequence as Tony is driving from New York. So like a lot of shows, they removed any kind of reference to those um, in the title sequence. But of course, the attacks will play more of a role within the plot itself in this episode too. Um, so let's jump into it. The episode opens as it always does with each season with Tony going to get his um, newspaper. There's a song playing, you know, World Destruction with the lyrics being, you know, the human race is becoming a disgrace. We're just setting up that things are a lot darker now in America and on the show after the terrorist attacks. Christopher comes to drive Tony. He's uh, the driver again, even though it's usually Furio. Um, we see Carmela kind of trying to make herself look pretty when she expects Furio to come over. Uh, so we're seeing the hints of her attraction to him, um, even in this episode. Um, but Christopher feels, um, you know, picked on by Tony. He doesn't understand why he has to be the driver again now that he's a made guy. Um, he feels he's above that. And he feels like Tony is giving him a hard time. So because of this, uh, Christopher starts using heroin. We've seen him use a lot of drugs already, but, you know, he's graduated to, you know, this really hardcore drug. And it's funny, he's complaining about, you know, how Tony treats him and how he feels like he's always there for Tony. <laughs> Meanwhile, he's shooting up heroin and not realizing what a liability that's going to make him. But it's funny that we, we see Christopher doing the heroin and then we immediately cut to Tony um, eating ice cream. So that's kind of a jarring image there. And it really suggests that, you know, just like Christopher, Tony has his own addiction to unhealthy things. Um, in this case, food, ice cream, sugar. So we see that Tony has an addictive personality just like Christopher. Um, but Carmela comes to talk to Tony. She's worried about their future. Uh, she saw Angie Bump and Sarah working at a grocery store. And again, the idea of working, you know, absolutely horrifies Carmela. So she's really worried what would happen to her if uh, Tony gets killed. Uh, she talks to him about wanting to do some estate planning. Her cousin is a financial advisor, and um, she wants to set up some trusts and bonds and stuff like that. Tony's not really interested. He's got money flow problems of his own. Um, and then Carmelo warns him that everything comes to an end. Uh, they've seen that with 9-11, uh, and it's foreshadowing to, you know, things are not going to end well for anyone on this show. Uh, but Tony goes to meet with Junior at the doctor's office. Junior wants more money. He has really high legal fees along with his, you know, cancer treatment. So he's really struggling right now. But Tony's having money problems of his own. He's got two kids in private um, schools and he doesn't want to give Junior any more money. Tony meets with his capos later and basically tells them he wants to see more growth. He wants them to go create more earners because he really needs more money. And we're seeing the economic decline that happened um, you know, after 9-11 and, you know, the war in Iraq, the economy has gone down from last season and these guys are starting to hurt. Um, we see Tony kind of stashing money away in case of emergencies. Um, he hides it in the floorboards and then later we see him hiding it um, in the duck food. Tony meets with Zellman and Zellman tells him to start buying up property around the Esplanade. They're building more shopping centers and things like that. So a lot of property that was junk before is now going to be worth a lot of money. Um, so Tony sees an opportunity. He knows that Junior has some broken down garage um, in that area. So he offers to buy it from Junior for $100,000, not telling him that it's really going to be worth, you know, way more than that. Uh, so he's really ripping Junior off and, you know, taking advantage of his money problems. But that's what these guys do. They're mobsters. Ralph and Rosalie come over for lunch at the Soprano household. You know, Rosalie is really struggling after the death of Jackie last season. Um, she's all medicated. 
Ralph goes to the bathroom to do some cocaine and Janice follows him into there and they end up hooking up. So we saw last episode um, in season three that Janice is interested in Ralphie uh, because he's a big earner and she's looking for her next meal ticket, uh, which is really gross to think of the two of them together. Uh, They're both despicable people, but yeah, it's what it is. Adriana also brings over her friend Danielle, who is actually an undercover FBI agent. So she's getting close to Adriana to get information about um, the mob. And Adriana brings her over to Tony's house, um, which is going to be a big problem later on. Uh, Meanwhile, Paulie is in prison. Um, In between the last season and this one, he got arrested off screen um, because they found a gun in his car. Um, So he's in prison now. Tony's not talking to him, only talking to him through mediators. Um, And again, this is causing a lot of resentment in Paulie. Um, And he goes and calls Johnny Sack and starts complaining. And Johnny is happy to listen to it because he's using Paulie as a way to get information. He knows how vulnerable Paulie is right now, and he's taking advantage of that. Uh, So we see people taking advantage of others um, throughout this episode. The guys have a party in the newly built hotel at the Esplanade. Um, They get some stewardesses from um, Icelandic Airlines to come over. Um, This is where we get one of the iconic lines of the series. Carmine Sr. tells Tony that a Don doesn't wear shorts, which uh, apparently David Chase or some people say James Gandolfini, a real-life mobster, told them that the show is incredibly realistic except for the fact that Tony wears shorts at cookouts, which apparently a real-life mobster would never do. I don't know if that's true, but that's where we get this line from. Uh, After the party, Tony takes Christopher on a drive. They go to this restaurant, and Tony points out a man and says that that was the man that killed Christopher's father. Now, I did a whole video talking about Christopher's dad, Dickie Moltisanti. He's going to be the main character in the uh, Many Saints of Newark movie. So if you're interested, check that out. Um, But essentially, he was killed when Christopher was a baby, so Christopher never knew him. And the reason Tony you know, is telling him this is because he wants to groom Christopher to be loyal to him. He tells Melfi later that he's looking to manipulate Christopher into basically being a shield for him to give orders through so that Tony can, you know, not get arrested. So Tony really has an ulterior motive here, um, just like everyone else in this episode. Uh, But Christopher goes um, and gets revenge, kills this guy. Again, I go into a lot more detail in that other video. I'll link it in the description, so check that out. Christopher tries to make it look like a suicide afterwards, which is just completely ridiculous. I mean, the guy's handcuffed. There's bullet holes in the wall. He robbed him. No police officer would ever believe this. But I think it's because Christopher is high, so he's not thinking straight. And he's just, um, you know, happy to finally got revenge for his father's death. Um, Later, he goes home uh, to see his mom, talks to his mom about his dad, and then leaves uh, the money that he, he stole from the cop, on the refrigerator. Um, And there's an interesting detail in that this is the one episode uh, not to fade to black in the series. Um, Instead, we hold on uh, the eye in the dollar bill or $20 bill, whatever it is. Um, So it's an interesting design choice that this is the one time they choose to not fade to black and instead hold on an image in the credits. But again, this is tied to, you know, money and the fact that people are watching them. These are all going to be major plot points this season. So yeah, that is uh, for all debts, public and private. Um, definitely a change in the series moving forward. And we're going to see that carry on throughout this season into the last season. A much darker tone after 9-11. Uh, but thank you guys so much for watching and stay tuned for the next Soprano Log coming soon. Special shout out to my patrons who made this video happen. Hunter, Tommy Smith, Abdallah Alamari, George Jones, Russell, Sean, Graham Favang, Rooftop, Rico Bellic, Heart of Markness, Broccoli, Isaiah, and Placenta Juan. You guys rock.